Welcome, Survivor of the Apocalypse. I'm Paul Sading. I'm the creator of Atheist Apocalypse, but I do not do this alone. There's a massive team behind this project. People who bleed, literally, sometimes you should see our staff meetings to create and produce what you get to listen to for free. If you enjoy this creation, you enjoy the world that we have created for you, please go over and give us a like on our Facebook page, facebook.com Atheist Apocalypse Podcast. Go over to iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, and rate us a great rating, right? Five stars, thumbs up, nice comments. Tell everybody how enjoyable this show is and how it brings a little less suck into each and every day. And if you're really curious about helping this team out, the best way you can do that is by heading over to patreon.com forward slash atheist apocalypse and becoming a patron of the show. For as little as a dollar per episode, you can really help this show reach the next level. But you can also do that over on our website, atheistapocalypse.com. Click on the Episodes tab, you'll see a link to the Patreon page and or a PayPal button if you'd rather help us that way. Either way, anyhow, all support is greatly appreciated, not only by myself, but also by all of the co-creators of Atheist Apocalypse who don't get to have all this fun mic time right at the front of the episode. That's because they're busy hogging it up in the rest of the episode. Speaking of which, we need to get to it. Thank you for listening. This is Ryan Bell from Life After God and the Life After God podcast, and I survived the apocalypse. Welcome to Atheist Apocalypse, a fictional comedy podcast for reason. All of the characters you are about to meet are fictional and do not represent real people. Except when they do. Either way, we welcome you to the show and would like to encourage you to head over to AtheistApocalypse.com for more information about the show, as well as details on how you can contribute to help keep the lights on. After all, this is the apocalypse, and we could definitely use all the help we can get. Thank you! Welcome, listeners, to your absolutely only source for news and over-exaggerated opinion, KUSA 9 News at 9. I'm Jake Leminski, and usually Beatrice is faithfully by my side, as all professional female co-hosts are supposed to be. But for some reason, she hasn't yet shown up to the studio. I did hear word that she had formed a search party this week in response to the lack of action taken by Sheriff Roger Rogers' three local police departments to find old Jake. But I'm sure that's just a rumor. We've heard through anonymous sources that old Jake is fine, and I've been assured by station management that his absence is temporary. It's more likely she's out buying Hanukkah party gifts. Beatrice really gets into throwing parties and looks for any excuse to spend money on silly streamers, plastic cups, ping pong balls, and whatever else is involved in hosting those obnoxious social events. Irregardless, the news cycle doesn't stop, and even if it did... We here at KUSA 9 News at 9 would act as any good news agency would and create a new one. Rest assured, listeners, you will always have more than your fill of news, real or imagined. Jake, uh, B's on her way back. She wants to know if you'd like anything from Starbucks. (laughs) Uh, no. I'm a real man. I like my coffee burnt and bitter. Like my ex-wife. All right, man. She was just asking. There's really no need to be nasty about it. She's, uh, she's sorry for being late. I'm sure that investigation's been taking up a lot of her time. Investigation? For what? I don't know, man. There's some, uh, stuff going down right now. Something about a guy coming down from Warbler Mountain into Lansdowne spouting some controversial stuff, uh, which kind of kicked off a little kerfuffle. Why in the world would she care about that? People fight all the time. It's only real news when it comes from Asian politicians. Have you seen those videos? That's funny stuff. In an update on a story we ran for you last time, all retail stores have run out of patchouli products following unanticipated levels of compliance from Tri-County residents. Citizens have been abiding by the directive set forth by the MGE, which establishes patchouli as the sole permitted fragrance. Most stores simply didn't believe such a large number of the population would willingly accept this new mandate. And as a result, we're now faced with a community that smells either patchouli or body odor. Though my nose says there's not much of a difference. Calls through the Golden Foghorn on Pier 13 still haven't been answered by our leaders. 
We continue to wait for word regarding their stance on whether extraterrestrial visitors are responsible for the mass disappearances. They've been as silent about it as comfortable white middle-class Americans are about racism in the 21st century. But just like that demographic, I'm sure that when the time comes, the MGE will annoyingly be at the front of the movement to confront those alien invaders. Listeners, I'm 110% sure that aliens are definitely responsible for all of the current problems we face as a species, and that absolutely nothing is our fault. This is something that needs to be taken very seriously. If you aren't already doing so, you need to... We need to break in on whatever it is you were reporting, though I doubt it was anything of importance to our listeners. Actually, Beatrice, we were covering something incredibly relevant and important. Right, I'm sure you were. I just got back from downtown, which is abuzz with activity. I've never seen so many people so anxiety, engaged in verbal sparring. Strangely, it was unnerving and energetic all at the same time. Ever since Harold Smith's public proclamation about aliens being responsible for the mass disappearances, people have been on edge. I'm not one for embellishment, but even I'll say that our community is balancing on a razor's edge on almost everything. So many people are taking sides on issues that barely qualified as Facebook fodder just a few days prior. Now they're willing to do battle to the death, sacrifice friendships, and even, dare I say it, unfriend each other on social media over these differences in opinion and perspective. This planet was already so rife with issues for folks to butt heads over that adding to the pile would have been previously unthinkable. It's become apparent that the only way the human race can coexist is by confirming one another's existence through vitriol and poorly reasoned debates. The hottest current debate, which currently called for me being undercover at a nearby coffee shop, is over the mysterious government entity's plan to finally address the banana spiders in the drinking water. Check out our new Fallout Bunkers, brought to you by the visionaries over at Cellar Door Skeptics. They're proud to present their new Fallout Bunker, made of the finest steel they could strip from defunct planes. They promise these new luxurious condos below the ground will protect you from the radiation, raiders, mutant men, and orgs. If you think the apocalypse was bad, just purchase one of these fine cellars from Cellar Door Skeptics and enjoy a roomy 1,000 square foot hibernation chamber. While everyone else is trying to kill themselves over the remaining food, inside you're going to find purified water and a startup supply of food. You can drink all you want along with an indoor ventilation tube to help circulate enough air to keep you from hallucinating. Please contact Christopher Tanner or Chris Hanna for one of these bunkers to help you prepare for the revolution. Check out their live commercial daily on iTunes and Spreaker that plays continually on all networks not controlled by the Brotherhood of Steel. Contact them direct at cellardoorskeptics at gmail.com for more information. And remember, no home is as cozy as a cellar door. Brought to you by Cellar Door Skeptics Podcast. A Cellar Door Skeptics Podcast is a trademark of Gnome Incorporated. Cellar Door Skeptics are not responsible for radiation leaks, death, syphilis, or any mutated gain from living below ground. Purchase now. Well then, it's become quite obvious they don't want you talking about that. Who? The mysterious government entity? No. Them. Uh Uh-huh. We'll have to get back to that later, because there's yet more breaking news coming in. Listeners, this came in so quickly that even someone as unflappable as I am is starting to wonder what is going on in our area. Word out of the Tri-County Capitol is that there was a fiery session in the chambers of the MGE this morning. Reportedly, there was an uproarious dissent among the men in black suits regarding the discussions about the nature of the disappearances, which quickly went south. According to sources, attitudes, wicked curves, and even chamber chairs were thrown when representatives from the various factions within the government disagreed on how to handle the aftermath of Easy Q's proclamation regarding the mass disappearances. Some representatives quickly dismissed EZQ's claims and argued in favor of patience and actual evidence, while another group urged the council to, and I quote, come to their senses and act before those illegals, end quote, 
We're on the doorsteps of the Tri Counties, stealing our jo- uh, I, I mean, uh, more more of our people, not jobs, just 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 people. After a few moments of attempting to clarify exactly who the illegals were, garnished with a hypnotic wave of finger pointing, the council proceeded their debate. Well, I'm sure we're all quite used to watching the inertia of government to the point of numbness. I regret to mention that the session ended without progressing in any way whatsoever. If and when something further breaks, we'll bring it to you. Until then, let's send it over to the duo delving deep into denialism, Max and Andy. What cataclysmic situation do you boys have for us today? Hello. Yeah, actually, we're calling it Max and Andy's extraterrestrial segment now. We should come clean. We always knew this invasion was coming. The weather bit? Well, that was just a charade. Now that the aliens are ever-present, our role is even more vital than before. That's right. We're only covering important invasion-related news from now on, and tonight we're discussing the subject of rampant et phobia. We can't judge all aliens based on the actions of a few responsible for the troubles we're experiencing here on Earth. This planet has become a dumping ground for every other species' problem. The extraterrestrials aren't sending their best and brightest to Earth. They're only sending the problematic ones. They're bringing spice with them. They're sending their thieves, rapists, and murderers. And some, we have to assume, statistically, are good creatures. Truth, Max. Truth. We need to wake up and defend our planet. Tear down the governments of old completely. Perhaps the MGE is an intergalactic agency trying to work us into the fold. Therefore, Max and I are officially endorsing the MGE as the representatives of Earth. Andy and Max's Waterworld will be donating 3% of all tax paid on every purchase of our certified lead-lined water barrels to the MGE's cause. Speaking of Max and Andy's Waterworld, we seem to be the only people around with a surplus of patchouli oil left. Supplies are limited on this high-end, very expensive, must-have product. Relevant, men resistant of buying our rain barrels have been walking around with raging boners. Like zombies or something. If you or someone you know is suffering from persistent boners, I've been told by several people that the smell of patchouli is a real boner killer. I am certain that the invasion force of greys are related to the water problems. It's all part of the gray agenda, to turn us all into sexual deviants, walking around with boners all the time. They think it's hilarious. I, for one, will not laugh at these jokers' boners. I hear the MGE has a team working on it as we speak. Stay tuned here for more information. Back to you, corporate overlords. We welcome Venice back to the program to give her readers some responses to their childish questions. Take it away, Venice. Thank you. Shrivel tweezers? No, dear. A magnifying glass won't help. You just have to see if you can make it bigger or have it replaced altogether. Blubber bauble? No. That is not acceptable behaviour on a first date. Tell your date that there should only be one spirit guide allowed out at a time until at least the fifth date. And then only if it's mutually agreed that multiple spirit guides are acceptable to both of you. Shrivel snout. Okay, if you're sure it fell off, then you really need to go and be fitted for a new one. And let's be careful where you stick the new one, shall we? Back over to you, Jake. Typically, when news like this comes in, people get all spun up sideways into their ceiling tiles. And while we realize that's indicative of an entire genre of German basement pornography, it is also a metaphor for American citizens becoming bent out of shape over sensationalized news. Something we here at KUSA 9 News at 9 pride ourselves in. With so many people on edge and villages ready to wage war over so many divisive issues, we want to bring you coverage of one particular topic tearing our community apart. 
Right. In what should be nothing but positive news, but actually isn't for many, the MGE has finally taken decisive action over the infestation we've been suffering since, well, since we were able to get our first broadcast out to you all those months ago. That's right, listeners. The government is finally going to do something about the banana spiders. And when I say something, I mean they're going to completely eradicate those, those buggers once and for all. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, pussycat. The language. This is a PG-13 show, regardless of whether or not Tyler understands that. Yes, Beatrice's zest for the utter destruction of the banana spider aside, word has come down that experts from as far away as China have been brought into the Tri-Counties, where they've formed a pest and fumigation task force of epic proportions. We are comfortable in reporting that there has literally never been a specialized pest control team anywhere near this complex, unique and absolutely ass-kicking. Reports are filtering into the newsroom from eyewitnesses who are nothing short of ecstatic about the level of firepower that has been brought into the area. We're talking about landmines, Uzis, Hydra 70s, and even a Wasp 58. This crew of hard-charging experts could teach Ferguson PD a thing or two about up-armored vehicles and enthusiastic response tactics. There is no way a single spider is escaping. Unless, of course, something interferes with the deployment of the team. Or someone. But more on that later. Right now, we need to get you over to Venice's vibrato. How are you doing, Venice? Anything new in welcoming new subscribers to your blog? No, Jake. You're just as silly as your facial hair. Hello, my lovelies. I only have a quick moment to update you on the strange events happening here at Warbler Mountain. Horace wants me to go and see a new Reiki practitioner he found, but he doesn't trust Gary to drive me. Says he doesn't like the wild look in Gary's eyes, and that his teeth are too big and blinding. I told Horace that Gary is fine, and it's not like Horace can drive so I'm going to have to talk some sense into him. He sure is awfully opinionated for someone who has been dead for five years. But what I wanted to tell you all is that Cosmia has had a breakthrough in her scrying. She's been seeing a man looking back at her through the vortex portal, but she couldn't seem to get a fix on who he was or manage to communicate with him. Well, last night, she finally made contact. She still can't see his face, but she was finally able to get a message from him. He said, find B. I need to talk to B. Unfortunately, that is all she could get him to say. She's not even sure if he can hear what she says back, but she's still trying. I wonder if maybe he is a beekeeper. Or maybe a musician who is fond of bee notes. It's so difficult to say. Oh, and Cosmia said that his voice sounded very familiar. But she just can't seem to place where she's heard him before. She is determined to figure out who he is and what he wants though. I will keep you posted as soon as I hear something, my lovelies. Until then, remember that the truth is what ever makes you happy and reality is whatever we believe it to be namaste gary stop throwing salt at horace he's barely here as it is i don't need you making him fade in and out like that from one to another let's see if kelly muttersee can follow up that insight from venice what do you have for us kelly Hello, dear listeners, it's me, Kelly Buttersy. Oh, enter the swag man. That's the name of my show. If you remember the name of my show, I don't remember it all the time because I do truckloads of drugs. I'm just here cruising around in my hip limp. Now, what I hear is happening in the Tri Counties area is you're still messing around with those bloody little spiders. Now, remember, 
I'm from Australia. Australia's made entirely out of spiders. So spiders don't bother me. So I'm going to tell you what I'm about to do. I'm setting the destination on my blimp and I'm coming to the bloody Tri-Counties. And what I'm going to do when I get there is I'm going to punch every one of those spiders right in the cloaca. Now, I know cloaca is a general term for a bird's pee and poop hole and also lady parts hole. But I, I don't know what part of a spider is that is that part. So I use the word cloaca just as a general, all of that on a thing that I don't know if an animal has that thing. I just call it a cloaca. So I'm going to come there. I'm going to punch every one of those spiders right in the spider cloaca. Now, Jake, you might be expecting me to be there and to shake you by the hand. I'm going to punch you in the cloaca too because you've been nothing but a bastard to me. I'm Kelly Muttersy and I'm on my way. Wow, Kelly, wow. Continuing on, whispers out of the Capitol tell us that apparently aliens are on the minds of our mysterious government entity I- entities. We're hearing it took nearly all the time between our last breaking news segment and this one for those developments to occur. What we're understanding is that one side of the MGE gave the other a concession over the possibility of accepting that aliens could have been the cause of the disappearances. As shocking as it was to hear the government was at least attempting to work together, we were even more impressed to hear that some progress was made towards an actual plan. We can't be any more specific than that because we haven't been given any more information, but at least it appears the people responsible for running every aspect of our lives are attempting to formulate policy. I cannot imagine it's easy to be a politician and govern uncooperative masses. So any action the mysterious government entity takes is laudable in this reporter's opinion. This reporter also believes it is commendable that our leaders are capable of putting aside those differences and buckling down to work. Something American politics haven't seen since the liberals started gaining a voice and disrupting things. According to our inside source, the various factions of the government are meeting to discuss not the validity of Harold Smith's claims that aliens abducted nearly half the population, nor what they can or should do about helping those of us left behind, but have instead opened the chamber floors to debate whether or not the existence of aliens qualifies as natural or supernatural. That's right, listeners. Instead of lightening the burden of survival carried by the average citizen, our self-proclaimed government is debating whether little green men constitute sci-fi or fantasy. So, since they aren't showing any urgency in resolving our community's problems, let's get you over to Artie and Sports. Welcome to the Sports Corner with Artie. Last week, my friend Phil covered my ship, as I took some personal time for self-discovery. Thank you, Will's Wine and Bistro. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. This week, we are at a fishing tournament. We're here at Transcending Lake to give the play-by-play. There are a lot of men gathered with what I'm told are Indian tanks with skull pictures on them. I'm pretty sure that might be racist. Must be some kind of hot new brand of fishing equipment. There's a huge crowd gathered here today. There are also lots of bugs. I've been bitten quite a few times by these strange spiders. The bites make me feel so strange. And they make me so angry. Ha uh-huh. ha! Oh boy, Hardy! That's probably the poison fighting against the chemical castration medication you're currently taking to lower your testosterone. You're probably right, Mickey. I wish I didn't need it, but I'm just becoming too manly lately. Say, aren't you a cartoon character? Haha! <laughs> That's right, Hardy! Only I'm not really here. I'm a figment of your imagination. Got a pretty clear sign. That you're going crazy. I was a jokester, Mickey, but I'll have you know that I was crazy once. They put me in a room. I died in that room. Rats like you ate my body. Rats make me crazy. Crazy? I was crazy once. They put me in a room. I died in that room. Rats like you ate my body. Rats make me crazy. Crazy? I was crazy once. They put me in a room. I died in that room. Rats like you ate my body. Rats make me crazy. Crazy? I was crazy once. They put me in a room. I died in that room. Rats like you ate my body. Rats make me crazy. Crazy? I was crazy once. They put me in a room. I died in that room. Thank you for that report, Artie. Let me ask you, 
Are you gaining any more Twitter followers as a result of this all-access reporting of yours? Probably not. A guy who is, though, is our field reporter, Rick Beckley. Rick, what have you uncovered for us today? Where is Sarah now? Seriously, this fan isn't going to unload itself. I cannot believe she's late. I am definitely going to have to have a talk with the studio execs about docking her pay. This is ridiculous. Rick! Rick! Well, it's about time. You know, you've got some serious explaining to do. Oh, shut up. What? Rick, listen to me. I just got through talking to Reuben Matthews. Who? Reuben Matthews. Ah, yes. Reuben Matthews. The sandwich guy? What? No! And Ew! Reuben Matthews is like the fourth highest ranked person on the mysterious government entity. Ah, of course. That Reuben Matthews. The sandwich guy is Scott. I'm so happy I don't even mind you being stupid today. Thanks! Wait. Anyways, I saw him coming out of a Taco Bell on my way over here, so I stopped and talked to him. Wait. So instead of coming straight here to do our future story of the grass not cutting itself, you decided to stop by a Taco Bell and talk to some guy? That's pretty unprofessional if you ask me. Rick, listen! Ruben told me that a little over half of the MGE believes the disappearances may be caused by alien abduction. And? And? You don't think that's a better story than the grass not being cut because people aren't around to cut it? Hmm. You may have a point there. Yeah, no kidding. Fine. We'll run with your story. Does Mr. Ruben Sandwich know that you're an assistant to a reporter? Or a van emptying coordinator? He knows I'm a producer at KUSA 9 News at 9, yes. Was your conversation off the record? Rick, if it was off the record, the last thing the world I'd do is tell you about it. Aw, thanks, Sarah. That means a lot. Um, okay. Camera on me in five. There's no... You know what? Camera's on you, big guy. Excellent. Five, four, three... Rick Beckley, and I'm standing here... Where are we? We're about a mile from Hope Falls. About a mile from Hope Falls, where I, Rick Beckley, spoke one-on-one with the Sandwich King himself, Scott Matthews. Should I have expected anything else? Anyways, Mr. Matthews notified me that a little over half of the MGE seems to believe that these disappearances have been linked to an alien abduction, or abductions. If this is true, then that makes us a whole new ballgame as to what we may be up against in the future. That also means there may be more disappearances to come. So until we see each other again, keep an eye in the sky and a hand in your pocket. This has been Rick Beckley, KUSA 9 News at 9. Saving the world, one story at a time. Back to the studio. I hate this job. Stellar, Rick. Just stellar. Well, it's happened. The situation regarding the deployment of a team of experts to slaughter each and every one of the banana spiders has come to a screeching halt. Just as the team was about to arrive at Transcending Lake, the epicenter of this infestation, they were accosted by a group of hippies who were so rebellious they actually refused to wear the mandatory patchouli scent. Crazy, right? Thankfully, unlike the time when they broke into our studios back in the late summer, there was no violence from the throng. Instead of resorting to violence and bloodshed, these groups participated in sometimes very aggressive side conversations and the occasional confrontation, but no fisticuffs were exchanged. It's obvious that under the government, with its conservative-leaning values, we are becoming a more peaceful, understanding, and dutiful society. What Jake forgot to mention was that the MGE actually threatened and then did fire on some of the crowd. Early reports in the studio indicated that it was completely over the top, with no one being spared. Not man, not woman, not child. And what Beatrice forgot to mention was that the crowd was fired upon by water guns. Literally. Plastic toy water guns. And I'm not talking about the rugged mobile sweet Gundam rifle. They were squirted on. Nothing more. Before they were dry, now they're a little moist. Besides, they were hippies. Trust me. 
throw a bar of Irish spring in the mix, and officials were doing everyone a favor. So the area was cordoned off while the team of highly paid pest controllers, government officials, and an informal throng of hippies debated the ethics and common sense of eradicating the spiders. The shouting came to a sudden halt when an order came down from the Golden Foghorn on Pier 13 to cease operations. The team of spider-killing experts was pulled back from the front lines, and one of the MGE's representatives told the gathered crowd that operations were postponed until a formal debate could be held. This announcement was followed with details that the debate would be held between the mysterious government entity and an unnamed representative from a new powerful animal rights group named the Whimsical and Unified Shrill Secularists. This is only speculation, but apparently Wuss is backed by the big bucks of a former computer tycoon back in the old world. Supposedly, this activist group is a big deal to him. At least until he can relaunch his computer empire under a world-dominating unified government. They've got staying power and currency-based influence. They're not going anywhere anytime soon. And neither are the spiders. If we get further detail in the future, we'll be sure to pass it along to you. Speaking of passing things along, this broadcast was brought to you by the Transcendent Lake Building and Bubbles Company. Not the success you thought you'd be. Maybe you dreamed of that corner office and six-figure salary for part-time work and full-time sexual harassment of your smoking hot secretary, only to realize that fine arts degree doesn't count for much in the real world while you sling yet another drunk banker as eighth cocktail of the evening. Do your parents, siblings, and even your grandparents laugh at you? Are you withholding from the offering plate and rationalizing it by convincing yourself that times are tough? Haven't made it to see your priest for confession in over a year? Worried about the status of your eternal soul? Well, worry no longer. Transcendent Lake Building and Bubbles Company has a guaranteed solution to all your worldly and existential problems. Call 555-879-2737 to guarantee your stairway to heaven today. We've just received word that the latest session at the Capitol has finished and the MGE has sent word to all media outlets that they have yet to categorize the disappearances and that they cannot, and I quote, make further planning decisions until we understand exactly what happened. And that, quote, this material is really itchy. When pressed for a proposed timeline for some sort of workable solution to alleviate the pain and suffering of us survivors, the representative, not present, speaking through an interpreter, reportedly said, Yes, I like tacos, but prefer Norwegian cuisine. It's more agreeable to my palate. The representative was then asked if alien abductions were the only scenario being examined by the officials and responded with a stern statement about the lack of faith in the unseen authority and how that reporter should spend less time questioning the mysterious government's ways and more time being thankful that they stepped into the void created by the disappearances of our previous government. So, dear listeners, it appears we won't have any answers to the questions we're desperately seeking. Some might say we're closer to a resolution now that the government has narrowed the options, but one has to wonder about the validity of those options. We could just be spinning our wheels here. But for now, we simply don't know and must believe that the authorities appointed over us will do what they can to ensure we are safe. If we just believe in them enough, we will surely begin to see the signs of their efforts everywhere we look, no matter the effort that must be exerted to make those connections. For what are our people without their government? What sort of society can lead itself out of the mire and into the light? Is mankind even capable of such feats when we can't even see the practical answers to questions not so complex? We need our government to save us from ourselves. And thankfully, we have the right entity now in power to ensure their will is done. And what more could a biddable resident ask for? So even as the sun sets on one uncertain day, leading into yet another uncertain day, I urge you, remember, listener, stay calm, and calm we shall stay. The Atheist Apocalypse Podcast is a Paul Sading production. You can find more information and links to support the show's Patreon campaign at www.atheistapocalypse.com. Today's episode was written and edited by Paul Sading, Brian Bristol, Jeff Venutsis, Jay Crowfoot, Deborah McTaggart, Dan Cacola, and Nick Morganmore. 
It was produced by Brian Bristol. Oh. Dude, oh my god, you would not believe the crap that I've had to put up with today. Are you busy? Yeah, well, I'm Keep trying to... Re- vent for just like two minutes. I'm trying to record the outro for this show, but yeah, I mean, the on-air light is there for a reason, but go ahead. Now I gotta start over, but go ahead. He thinks the toaster is a time machine. I don't know what's wrong with any of you. I don't... Me? Yeah, can I get back to work? Or whatever. Do you want anything from Starbucks being on gown? Um, yeah, anything pumpkin. Yeah, Okay. got it. <sighs> Music was created and produced by Jason Camo. All artwork you can enjoy on our YouTube channel was created by Lucy D. The voice of Venice was Donna Shell. All advertiser memes... Cre- hey, did you want... Jesus you want Christ... Say- did you want it skinny or whole? I, I don't know what kind of milk you like. Of course, skim. All right. No soy. No do soy. So, no, do soy. You want soy. I want soy. Do you do skim soy. Skim. Okay. Non-GMO. Yep. Music was created and produced by Jason Camo. All artwork you can enjoy on our YouTube channel was created by Lucy D. Hey, did you want cinnamon in that? I, I don't... Don't look, why are you looking at me like that? I'll see myself out. I don't care. You know what? You finish it. I don't care. I'm leaving. Where was he? All right. Music was created and produced by Jason Kimo. All artwork you can enjoy on our YouTube channel was created by Lucy D. The voice of Venice was Donna Shell. All advertiser memes created by Nancy Drew. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com front slash atheist apocalypse podcast and follow us on Twitter at AA podcast show. We'd like to thank every single one of you who supports the show, keeping it alive and well, which is more than we can say about this post-apocalyptic world that we've created for you.